Hey guys, we'll continue with cracking codes with Python. And before we actually start writing our encryption programs, we're gonna cover some basics about programming in general. We're gonna learn about operators, operations, and also expressions in Python. Let's first cover how we can do some simple math in Python's interactive shell. For that, we can open idle. And once started, we are going to see the interactive shell and the cursor blinking next to the prompt. And the interactive shell can work just like a calculator. So for instance, we can go ahead and type an expression in by typing in two plus two and pressing enter. And the interactive shell then displays the result. So in this case, four. So in this case, the plus sign tells the computer to add two numbers, but we can also practice subtraction, multiplication or division. Now these signs plus, minus, divided and multiplication are called operators. And the number, for example, the twos that we are adding are called values. And the combination of values and operators form an expression in Python. In programming, whole numbers such as two and four are called integers, and numbers with a decimal point, such as 3.5 for instance, are called floating point numbers. Integers and floating point numbers are data types. So integers are abbreviated as int, and floating point numbers are abbreviated as float. Every value in Python has a data type, and we're gonna cover those data types in more detail in a later video. Now we've already seen one math problem and how we can address it but Python can compute much more complicated expressions. So for instance, we can go ahead and we can, for example, add four numbers together. We can also multiply numbers, or of course, combine different operations. For example, we can subtract a number and then add another number. And these math problems are called expressions. Expressions are made up of numbers, for example, two and four, and operators, such as plus or minus. It's also important to consider the order of operation. Just as in math class, if there is a multiplication, for instance, and an addition, the multiplication has a higher precedence and will be executed first. So if we have a more complicated expression, then the order of precedence becomes very important. So in general, parentheses have the highest order of precedence and will be executed first, followed by multiplication and division, and then addition of a lower precedence. So in an expression, we can have multiple values connected by an operator, or we can have a single value. But it's important that we write syntactically correct code. So for example, if we write two plus and we don't have a second value, then this is going to lead to a syntax error. And it's perfectly fine to make errors, of course. This just tells us that there's an error in the code and then we can address that right away. Programs often need to save values for later use. And to do that, we can use a variable and a variable is formed by specifying a variable name and then using the equal sign followed by a value that should be stored in that variable. And assigning a value to a variable is called an assignment statement. We can either assign a single value or an expression to a variable. But it's important to keep in mind that our variable will store a single value, not the entire expression. So the expression will be evaluated first and the result of the expression will then be stored in a variable and can be accessed later on. We can also change the value of a variable later on that is called overriding a variable. And by doing that, we assign a new value to an existing variable name. So let's have a look at a quick example. Here we create a variable called spam and we set it to the value 15. We then add five to spam. So spam has now a value of 20. And then we can overwrite the variable by setting spam to three. If we then add five to it, spam has a value of eight. We should make sure that we name our variables appropriately so that we know later on what is actually stored in the variable. It's also important that our variables are case sensitive. That means whether we use lowercase or uppercase letters really matters because that refers to different variables. Now let's practice what we just learned by addressing the practice questions. The first question is, which is the operator for division? Is it forward slash or backward slash? The right answer is forward slash. Which of the following is an integer value and which is a floating point value? So we know that an integer value is a whole number. So therefore 42 is an integer value and floating point values are values that have a decimal point. So the second number here, 3.141 and so on, is a floating point value. Which of the following lines are not expressions? So we know that we have an operator, for example, plus, minus, times or divided, that we need two values associated with it. So if we have a look at that, we can already see that two plus is not a valid expression because we are missing the second value. And also if we look at the first line, we have four X 10. 
So the X symbol here is actually not the correct symbol for multiplication. That would be the asterisk symbol. So the first one is not a valid expression. The second one is a valid expression. The third one here, two plus, is not an expression. And also the last one here, spam equals 42, is not an expression. The right side here, 42, is a value slash expression, but spam equals 42 is actually an assignment operation. And 42 and two plus two are both valid expressions. In the first case here, 42, that's an expression with just a single value, which is still valid. And here we have two values and one operator. The fourth question is, if you enter the following lines of code into the interactive shell, what do lines one and two print? So here in the first line, we have an assignment statement. We are assigning the value of 20 to the variable spam. Then we increase the value of spam by 20. Then we create a new variable with all uppercase letters and set it to 30. And since variable names are case sensitive, we know that spam in capital letters is different from spam in lowercase letters. So if we are referencing spam here at the end, then we're going to get back a value of 20 because we're referencing the original variable and not the variable in all uppercase letters. So let's open up idle to have a look at that. And first we can set the variable spam to 20. Then we are increasing the value of the spam variable by 20. So now we have a value of 40. And now we set a new variable spam in all uppercase letters to 30. And we are then referencing spam again, but this is of course the original variable. So here we get a value of 20 back rather than 30. In this video, we covered the basics of writing Python instructions in the interactive shell. And it's really important that we write it exactly as specified because the computer otherwise doesn't know how to execute our statements. We also learned about variables and how we can store values. With these foundations in place, we can continue learning more about programming and then starting with writing our encryption programs. In the next video, we are going to create programs that are going to execute statements in a sequence rather than one at a time. And we are also going to create our own programs. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave a like down below if you found the video helpful and see you guys in the next video.